Thanks for staying with us. Now there are concerns that the dominance of foreign languages like English language in homes is worrisome and a threat to mother tongue. This report captured International Mother Language Day that promotes linguistic, cultural diversity and multilingualism that can advance inclusion and sustainable development goals, focusing on leaving no one behind. This year's theme set by UNESCO focuses on using technology for multilingual learning. Ngozika Ohaichesi has more. Language plays a vital role in development and in ensuring cultural diversity. It is estimated that over 400 languages are spoken in Nigeria, with major languages Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, Fulfide, and Ibibio, among others. Sadly, there seems to be a threat to traditional languages, and Nigeria is not an exception. It is quite common to see young Nigerians who cannot have simple conversation in their mother tongue as globalization takes the center stage. They only speak English when I'm at work, but if I'm at home, I only speak my language. I speak my mother tongue often, most especially if I'm with my people, or if I'm with any of my tribal or person. But the situation whereby I am not with them. I don't speak that language. I don't speak my mother tongue except I'm in my house or except I see a friend or anybody that speaks the same language with me. So most likely I do English all day. Acting Director of Research and Studies at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, IFEM Ubi, helps on this year's theme which focuses on advancement of languages through technology. Every language is supposed to have characters, you know, and uh, accent that helps to pronounce the words. Now, you see, people are supposed to have done that, you know, and be able to come up with this uh, uh, character and the pronunciation of words using the accent, you know, how it should be written, the sense of the language itself for technology, to be, you know, for us to leverage technology in making this uh, language more uh, uh, accessible in terms of uh, people learning these languages, you know, through, uh, say, multimedia technology, um, learning this language through um, uh, uh, the 21st century technologies like the computers, the internet, and all that. Ubi insists Nigerian education system must be standardized with a nationally accepted language. For me, you know, it's going to be it's going to be sounding um, um, uh, funny in a way. You see, the pidgin English English it's something that has bind Nigerians together. So if we can create a language out of the pidgin English, because if you go to the north, you want to speak. For a not to understand, you speak the pidgin English, you can't speak Hausa. You come to Lagos, you speak the pidgin English, if you can't speak Yoruba. Or you, come, you go to any other Yoruba town. If I go to Igbo uh, uh, states, you know, within that speak the Igbo language, and I'm not from Igbo, the only national language that is binding us is the pidgin English. In a country where the lingua franca is the English language, the question is, how can the wide gap of local languages and English be closed? Perhaps a conscious effort from the home front may go a long way. Ngozika or Haichesi, Plus News. The former senator representing River Southeast, Magnus Abe, has commended President Mohamed Buhari for not interfering with Nigeria's electoral processes, saying it will stand him out after 2023. Abe stated this during his visit to Kokoroko, an entire local government area of River State, to thank the Gwenemene uh, of Thai, King Godwin Genewa, and members of the Supreme Council of Traditional Rulers of Ugoni for the chieftaincy title bestowed on him by them. The report is here. Senator Magnus Abe said the 2023 general elections is another opportunity for Nigerians to come together and elect a government of their choice. 
Abe called on stakeholders in Ogoniland to actively participate in governance in order to have a sense of inclusion. It is an opportunity for us to choose a government that will serve us, a government that will put the interest of the people above every other interest. There is nothing to fear. It is something that is doable. It is something that is achievable. And when people talk about me and governorship, I want to use this opportunity to say clearly for everybody to hear, it is not about Senator Abe being governor. It is not about an Ogoni man being governor. It is important that the Ogoni people for purposes of inclusion should have a sense of well-being. The Gene Mene of Thai and chairman of the Supreme Council of Ogoni traditional rulers, King Godwin Gininwa, appeal to the people and political parties to support candidates from Ogoni ethnic group to succeed Governor Nyesem Wike in 2023. The fourth class traditional ruler, who noted that the Ogoni people have supported other ethnic groups to become governors in the past, said the area is blessed with capable hands to lead the state. The chance is open for you. All the people that are in government today and yesterday, we are partly responsible for making it. I have met so many people as governors. Oh, God, people are not happy. No, we are not happy. Speaking on the power of the electorate and the bimodal voters' authentication system, BVAS, machines, Abe said Nigerians and Rivers people are expected to do things better than before. Meanwhile, the Gene Mene called for peace in Ogoni land and the state, urging government at all levels to create employment opportunities for the youths. 2022, as we are in already, there should be peace in Ogoni land. Amen. Let there be peace in River State. Amen. If Buhari has not done anything for Nigeria, he has done something that Nigerians can never forget. He has given you, the Nigerian people, the power to choose whoever you want as your leader. With the advent of the BFAS machine, which identifies every vote, you have the opportunity to choose whoever you like. Senator Abe urged his supporters to sensitize people in every nook and cranny of the state to understand that the power to choose who will lead them in 2023 lies in their hands. And finally, about 31 out of 100 substance addicts have been given a new lease of life and reintegrated into the society. This is courtesy of the Christ Against Drug Abuse Ministry, CADAM, an outreach of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG. Plus TV Africa captured the completion and graduation of beneficiaries from the various skill acquisitions put in place to restructure their lives, which held at the Enoch and Folu Adebayi Rehabilitation Center, Araga Ebe, Lagos. There are many social factors that have resulted in the abuse of drugs. These include the declining family value systems, peer pressure, social media influence, poverty, and unemployment, among others. These were once in Dutch net until help came for them through the Christ Against Drug Abuse Ministry. Family and friends have come to witness the graduation of the 50th set of Kadam, themed, branded for Christ. Drug abuse among youths is already a time bomb waiting to detonate with devastating consequences if more concerted efforts are not adopted to address the societal vice. There is also an urgent need to establish support and encourage more rehabilitation centers across the country. The importance of drug demand reduction cannot be overemphasized because if we continue to take out traffickers, as long as there is high demand for illicit drugs, a new set of traffickers will easily be recruited to fit that craving. Every effort to treat and rehabilitate drug users is welcome as it often delivers far-reaching results. We will need support from everybody. Those who are graduating, remember this alma mater, those who have graduated, and from the general public too. Most of it's a faith-based driven program, NGO. But we will expect that some of you will spread the good news so that we'll be able to achieve this call to order. Some of the beneficiaries went back memory lane sharing their ordeals in drug addiction. Me, I'm 
Ogogoro, and the Ogogoro woman. I tell Governor, like Governor, I was there. I will tie him. Even the breeze is carrying me all about like a chicken chicken. And I thank God today. Yes, you can see how we're all looking. Awesome. I could clearly remember when we came in here the first time. Ah. We were looking horrible. Some people went through Jonesy for three, four weeks, even two months. They don't just know where they are. I'm into art drugs, I'm into Charlie Thai, cigarette, and um, alcohol. Really, it almost took my life away. And drugs depart children from parents and parents from children. It wasn't easy at all. You know, I had to adjust to a lot of things. I had to um, deal with a lot of things, open up to a lot of truth that I'd previously been in denial about, you know, um, things like um, how badly my substance abuse had damaged my life, damaged my family, things like that. I had to own up to all that and um, face those issues. Dr. Dokun Adedeji is the director of CADAM. He could not help but expressed his joy for the success achieved, but most of all urged that the society not discriminate against the survivors. When you see people that came in like a wretch, and then you see them transformed like this, and then we're seeing this kind of beauty, it gives you absolute satisfaction. Society should understand that we need to give a second chance to these people. They are our children, they are husbands, they are wives. We can't throw them away. According to Dr. Adedeji, CADAM has created a continuous support system for the survivors that would enable them to thrive in their various acquired skills. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. But before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obuko. Thanks for watching.